think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, you've got to have a hobby, otherwise you're going nuts. Yeah. Hey, Doug, jump in, mate, and I'm sure you've got some uh, questions. Like, obviously, you know a little bit about Australia, but uh, this is the first... Um, you know, interview we've had where someone's actually, uh, you know, lived right on in the desert, on the coast, and in a completely different lifestyle. Uh, so, yeah, go away, Doug. What do you, I mean, don't go away. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, John, uh, what's your funniest memory of working on the railway? Oh, yeah, there were a lot of funny instances. Um, had a work with a guy. They called Krusty, and uh, we, we were turning a light engine at Tom Price uh, one time through the um, tunnel, and there were a heap of cows and things on the uh, on the track, and uh, we started tooting them, but they wouldn't move. So anyway, he got down out out of the uh, loco and went up to the bull and did the crocodile Dundee thing. <laughs> that was quite funny at the time. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. I only watched that the other night, and it was yeah. funny he did that, that was hilarious when he did. I love it when he was in the uh, uh, when he had all the bad guys uh, when that that cage was there, and he goes, "No, don't worry about him. You better worry about the mother-in-law. Uh, and don't worry <laughs> about the mother-in-law. You better worry about that." It was hilarious, mate. Uh, yeah. Hey, John, did it work? Did it work? Yeah, when yeah. He did that? to move <laughs> because they lived that was actually in the in the mine site and so the little cows everywhere in there because it was originally pastoral land and that sort of thing and so uh, oh wow yeah that's so, hilarious crocodile that's a, pretty, a locomotive driver <laughs> that's a pretty crikey story i'll say <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, there are others, but I can't think of them offhand. But if I think of anything, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure there's plenty that you, you know that you can't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's, there, every driver that we've interviewed and the fact, you know, when I was there, we have some great stories, but they just have to stay. They have yeah, to stay. Like they say, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Well, yeah, what happens yeah. in the railways, leave it there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, there were some wild uh, individuals involved in train driving, that's for sure. Oh, couldn't imagine out there, mate. Like, uh, could not imagine. Uh, Doug? So, John, uh, if, you had to, if you had to think of it, uh, what's your favourite part that you had, or what's your favourite thing about being part of the railway? Oh, it's just being uh, involved with it, it uh, making it all go. Um, remember... For example, you know, you, you do shunting at uh, Seven Mile at Dampier and you'd be getting things ready and then, uh, you know, if it all worked sweet, the, the train would depart. But it's the satisfaction of um, driving a train successfully and you're getting off at the end of the day without having to answer any questions you'd rather not be answering. No, uh, uh, the, the big trains really uh, drove well and uh, I, I found that um, if you followed the... Um, the accepted procedure, you, you generally got on pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just something you just reminded me of. It was a, uh, I don't think it was that long ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago where um, a locomotive, I don't know if it was just the locomotive or the whole train actually ran, took off with no yeah, one on it. That was a BHP. Um, yeah, uh, I never did read the full under... Uh, full report onto what happened there, but uh, um, I, th I think there was a bit of driver error involved. But, yeah. yeah and, and, quite, and it actually quite, went... But, uh, it, 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 how far did it run, John? Uh, uh, I think it was about 60 or 80 kilometres, something like that, but it got up to over 100, 100 mile an hour. Wow. What happened, he didn't dump the air before, uh, before getting off the train, and if he had dumped the air, it wouldn't have run away. Wow. And that's that's the thing, like human error happens everywhere. I mean, yeah. every industry you've got that, sadly. But how, how did they, did they, what I heard is they got ahead and they actually um, derailed the train. Is that correct? Yeah. Put it into a siding so it uh, took the turn out pretty heavy and at pretty fast speed and over, over she went. Yeah, that's, yeah, because yeah, a friend of mine um, um, sent me some photos Um not that he took, but he got some. But I think they, they got into a bit of trouble, actually, because posting photos on social media. Yeah, um, yeah, 
Yeah, well, actually, you, you know a good friend of mine, Rob Wilco. Yeah, 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 I used to work with him a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah me and Wilco. Oh, man, we, we, we're really close buddies from the railways. We used to we yeah, used well, ride bikes and, you know. Yeah, he, as far as I know, he's still up there. Yeah, I think he is. Rob's, um, Rob, uh, he's, he's a pretty easygoing guy. I mean, he, oh, he likes, yeah. he, he just loves, he's just easygoing. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he gave me some photos and he just said, you know, the lot of guys got into trouble for taking them. And, um, I think what happened is one goose was in a departmental vehicle and he took photos. If he had just taken the photos, and no one knew who did it, it'd be okay, but he was in yeah, the vehicle he, and they knew who it was. <laughs> yeah, he was talking on that. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not, not particularly smart. Um, Doug, uh, any more questions, mate? <laughs> so, John, uh, uh, are you still close with anyone you used to work with on the railway? Um. Sort of yes and no. There was uh, a guy that I've been friends with for a long time. Uh, he went up to the uh, the Pilbara uh, at, to Tom Price, and I followed him about five months later. But yeah, we've always been good friends. So yeah, we remain friends. He's in the live steam hobby as well. So I uh, see him quite regularly. Hey, j talking about this, I don't know if people can sort of quite see it, but steam locomotive just behind you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that hobby you've got? Because it looks like, I mean, it's an engineering feat what you guys do. Yeah. Um, I didn't build this one. I bought it, but I've extensively rebuilt it. I've had it entirely to pieces. I've remachined the cylinders and uh, made a new exhaust system for a lubricating system. But um, there's quite a large following right throughout the world, and there has been all throughout the uh, 20th century to the present day of a fascination with miniature locomotives. And so uh, th this one is a bagnell that's scaled down at about inch and three quarter to the foot, I think it is. Uh, and um, uh, everything the big one has, usually uh, the models have, namely it's got a copper boiler that you steam up. Uh, it's got, uh, this one got gunmetal cylinders and it uh, drives just as the, as the full-size ones do. Um, and this was blue when I first bought it, and I got sick of all the kids calling it Thomas, so I thought I'll, ah. I'll make it, paint it another colour. And I always liked yeah. them around, uh, trimmed in black with the yellow lining, so I uh, thought I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Wow. And, and your, your time as a fitter would have really um, help you sort of, you know, engineer a lot of these things too, huh? Oh, I yeah, yeah. Be being a fitter helps and uh, having an insight on machining helps as well. Uh, that's the hard part of making a model uh, is the mm. machine of the critical components, components, but there's copper work when you make the, uh, the flange plates for the boilers and there's uh, sheet metal work. Uh, I've got a pile mm. of brass here for the, the tenders of the locos I'm building at the present time. Um, yeah, fitting, painting, you know, uh, styling and, and having a keen eye uh, for scale mm. and proportion uh, if you're freelancing a little bit. But um, what I'm building now is um, a South African 440 that was on two-foot gauge, uh, originally built for the Byra Railway in Mozambique. But um, uh, I'm, this is scaled at two and a quarter inches to the foot. And I've got drawings for the engine from a uh, model engineering society in South Africa, but I'm doing a different tender that was uh, fitted to some of the Byra uh, railway locos uh, that were made by Fowlers of Leeds. So I've got the drawings from Fowlers and I'm scaling down those drawings uh, and working from wow. them. It's really fascinating and quite frustrating because the dimensioning of drawings is not quite what it is today. And so it t some of it's taken a bit of nutting out to get it right, but that, that's part of the hobby, you know. It's a challenge, and uh, wow. you see, see it through. That's awesome, mate. And that's obviously, I mean, what a what a great thing to be able to come out of a career and then still live that career without actually being there. You know, like yeah, you know, yeah. changing it. Um, yeah, oh, that's really awesome. Like, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because we'd love to see if you can um, contact some of these people overseas that you just mentioned in these uh, STEAM societies, because we'd love to be able to get them on 
on the channel and, you know, different people who are interested, you know, that would be amazing talking about model trains. Look, I, I'm sure I could find a, a, quite a number of people. Uh, Kevin Dale being one, uh, he, he's a modeler as well. And he's yeah, we got, got him. Got... We did yeah. him. Yeah, oh, okay. He's, okay. He's, he's crossed off the list. But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we're, we're going to go up and um, get, get some video when I go to Australia and put it on. But, yeah, we'd love to be able to talk to not just guys who've driven trains for real, but also what they're doing after, and especially this, because this is, uh, to me, this is way more, um, uh, how can I say, uh, way more skillful and intricate than actually being a real locomotive driver. Like this is, what you're doing is just, wow, 